Hey guys, Beta One Studios right here with another very interesting After Effects tutorial. And today we're going to take a look at how to do some easy transitions in Adobe After Effects. Now, I personally like to keep things simple when I do any sort of transition, since super flashy transitions aren't really all that effective unless you really know what you're doing. Today, I'll be showing you three very simple transition effects that I use all the time right inside of After Effects. Alright, so here I have two Beta 1 Studios graphics that I pulled from one of my intros. So the first transitional effect I'll be showing you is called Venetian Blinds. It's probably one of the most basic transitions you can do, but it can still be pretty effective given the right circumstances. Let's go over to Effects and Presets, type in Venetian Blinds, and drag it right over. As you can see, all this effect does is a simple wipe split up into multiple sections. You can adjust the size of these sections by changing the width value up here. I usually like to keep my width nice and large to get this thick wipe effect. Anything between 200 to 300 is what I would recommend. If we set keyframes from 0% completion to 100% completion, you get a quick and easy Venetian blind wipe animation. Okay, that's looking alright, but it's a bit dull. Could use some smoothing out. Let's press U to view all our active keyframes. Select both of these keyframes, and right-click, Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease. This is pretty standard procedure for doing any sort of native easing inside of After Effects. But we can go even further by opening up the graph editor here and tweaking the curvature of this animation a bit. Let's select the end keyframe and take this yellow handlebar here and drag it out. This will make our animation faster in the beginning and then slower at the end. If you want it to be the opposite way, just adjust the first keyframe instead. Now, the final parameter you can edit is the angle of your wipe. You can just play around with the direction angle here. Ooh. I'm going to go ahead and set it to 45 degrees, since that matches up with the angle of my logo here. As you can see, this effect is coming on quite nicely, and it wasn't all that hard to do either. For my next transition, I'll be demonstrating the card wipe effect. Now, this effect has a ton of options, and if I tried to cover every single combination, I'd be here all day. So I'll just try to go over the essential parameters you need to know to make this thing work just the way you want it to. The card wipe effect is, as always, under your effects and presets, so if we just apply it here, you'll notice that it essentially splits up your layer into little cards and flips them over. Honestly, all the parameters here are pretty much self-explanatory. You can set transition completion keyframes from 0% to 100%, and set the width of the transition, which is basically how wide of an area it affects. If you make this smaller, it'll just flip the cards in much smaller increments. You can add more rows and more columns to the effect too. This can get you some pretty interesting results. For instance, if you set rows to 1 and columns to a large number, you'll get a sort of spiral transition. Or you could just set both rows and columns to one, and your entire layer flips around as one piece. You can change the flip axis from X, which is up and down, to Y, which is side to side, or even make it totally random if you have multiple cards to flip. Changing your flip direction will simply reverse the direction your layer rotates, and flip order will give you tons of different options as to what order you want your cards to flip in. For instance, left to right, right to left, etc. Card scale will increase or decrease the size of each individual card in your transition. Now, by this point, you've probably noticed that this effect is cool and all, 
but it's not exactly transitioning, is it? Well, that can be easily fixed. Just go to the Back Layer dropdown and select the other layer that you want to transition to, and with that, the back sides of all the cards will magically turn into your other layer. Also, you might want to hide that second layer so that it doesn't show up in the background as your cards are flipping. Ooh. Now, the final transitional effect I'm going to show you is an effect called CC Lens. I use this effect a lot. I mean, seriously, I kind of have a thing for it. Maybe it's started to get old already, but that still doesn't stop me from using it. Typically, CC Lens is used purely as a distortion effect, and I've used it for that too. But I also like to use it as a transitional effect. So let's take a look at how to do that. Once you apply the lens effect, you'll notice that the layer looks like it's encased in a tiny glass sphere. If we increase the size here, the sphere will expand, and vice versa. Hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. We're going to set the size keyframe to 0 at the beginning, and transition it to 500 at the end, which is the maximum size. Now you'll notice that even though we've reached the max size of 500, the edges of the layer are still kind of distorted. That's because the convergence is still set at 100. If we set it to 0, the layer will return to being completely flat. But make sure you also keyframe convergence starting from 100 and then going down to 0, because if you don't, all you'll get is a really boring circle transition. And there you have it. These are three of my favorite transitions to use inside of After Effects. They're super simple and easy to use, and with them, you'll be getting professional looking results in no time at all. So that's about all I've got. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this tutorial as much as I enjoyed making it, and I will catch you guys next time.